It seems some drug users are actually getting a second chance with the New South Wales government chasing around $29,000 worth of unpaid drug penalties. Now it comes as the state considers actually extending the controversial criminal infringement notices to give drug users another two chances before they're actually criminally charged. Now one man who is incredibly disappointed by this is Tony Wood. Tony's teenage daughter Anna died tragically from an ecstasy overdose at a Sydney party in 1995. Tony, Tony joins me now from Sydney. Tony, my heart goes out to you even all these years later. You've gone through what no parent should ever have to. Talk us through Anna's story and, and why you're such a passionate anti-drug campaigner. Oh, Corey, oh, nice to meet you. I've never met you before. Um, look, I, I've been doing this for 25 years now. Anna died in, uh, well, her funeral was in October 95. Uh, and from then on, we were just an invisible family up to that stage and then we were dragged out into the public by the media. Um, I'm not sorry it's happened, but it's been a hard sort of 25 years, I can tell you. We, our biggest problem in this country is we seem to have a war for drugs and not a war against drugs. I mean, if our objective should be to reduce drug use. If we did that, first of all, we'd reduce the prison population and then we'd, um, we'd reduce the mental illness. Uh, you can just go on and on with the pluses for not having drug use going on in our country. Yeah, Tony, you make a good point that a lot of the people who are um, advocating for sustainable use of drugs or decriminalisation ignore the a, tragic consequences, of course, but the long-term mental health consequences, the crime consequences of, uh, that are attached to drugs. And, and when are we going to actually learn that, that allowing people to continue to ingest drugs without any real penalty uh, is only going to damage them and society even more. Corey, I give myself a headache every day thinking about how we can uh, stop young people starting on their drug journey because it's, uh, it's a backward step once they start using. And the point is mm. we, we can keep handing out these on-the-spot fines and all that sort of thing, but that's not the answer. The answer is a lot of... A lot of the people who die from taking ecstasy, particularly, they're first-time users. So we can't give them mm. three strikes and you're out because they, some don't last three strikes. They go on, on the first one. Anna was the first-time first, first -time user. I've met so many other parents who have lost their kids first-time users. Uh, so, look, I don't, yeah. I don't know how the heck we can stop it, but uh, the, the education system's all wrong to start with. We, uh, we really need a better... Uh, drug education going on in Australia. It's a complete waste of time what kids are getting today. They'll talk about uh, what colour the drugs are or what they smell like, but they'll never talk about the dangers. And uh, we've got to start telling kids that it's dangerous to do it. Well, when you've got politicians at the federal and state level that are sort of arguing ag against tobacco but want to decriminalise, you know, heavy-duty marijuana and other, you know, so-called party drugs, you know we're in, into a, a, a recipe for disaster... But one thing you said to me, it said today, I read, was if you've got enough money to buy the drugs, you should be made to pay the fine. Now, that seems like common sense to me, but what's the New South Wales government doing, sort of not collecting the fines and then allowing them a, a second and a third strike? That's a worry, isn't it? It really is. We are, we're, we've got to get serious about the drug situation and we really do have to... Uh, and the only ones can do it really are our politicians. I think our Premier's got it right, but, uh, of course, she's being belted up in, in the Parliament, I think, and that's, that's worrying that uh, some of these yeah. people with her, they just don't think about what's going on out in the real world. Uh, they ought to come out with me for a while. I mean, some of the parents I bump into, particularly the mums, I've been with mums who haven't seen their boys for 15 years because they had to take out an AVO. They couldn't take the beatings anymore. These kids were beating their mums up to steal their money to buy drugs. So I've had mums in tears because they don't know oh, where their boys yeah. are, whether they're dead or alive. And, uh, and, uh, Tony, no, no parent deserves that. No peri parent deserves to go through what you've gone through for 25 years and... Um, my heart, as I said, goes out to you after all this time. It never goes away. 
And thanks so much for sharing your thoughts with me tonight. Thank you for your time.